Welcome everyone. I am um, Carolyn Peterson and I'm the Youth Services Coordinator for the Washington State Library. And today I have with us one of our better, our best, our better, one of our great, maybe great is the best way to say it, great partners, um, Jennifer Norris, who works at uh, the Department of Early Learning, which is, what's the new name uh, for the, uh, we, the new department? We will be the Department of Children, Youth, and Families, and when will that, And why, when will that happen? The transition? That will take place in, in, in we'll transition in July of 2018. Okay, so you are t looking oh, at a countdown of eight, eight months or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big thing. Well, um, I did want to say to everyone that uh, Jennifer is going to be going through, and we've talked about if you have questions, if you will type them in chat. I'm going to be ma monitoring the chat button, a box, I should say. And so I will gently inter interrupt uh, Jennifer if you have a, a question as that occurs to you as she goes through her talk about early achievers. And then if any of your colleagues um, you know, miss this presentation, it will be archived on our web page, and generally Jeremy has it up by the afternoon of the presentation, and it's going to be on under our, um, we have an early, early learning section on the Washington State Library Youth Services uh, web pages. So look for it there if you want to recommend this to another um, individual. I just put the URL in the chat there for the Youth Services page. Okay. Early, sorry. There you go. So that's where it's going to be. So in the meantime now, I am going to, um, could we advance the next slide? Okay, there it is. I, we always like to um, acknowledge our funding individuals. We, uh, the Washington State Library is a part of the Office of the Secretary of State, but library development, of which I am a member, is uh, funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So we like to say, um, you know, we want to remain people that our funding does come from the federal government and that the budget is a part of the federal budget as, um, you know, and, and so we always appreciate people understanding where the programs um, come from them. And so now, uh, with no further ado, I'm going to ask Jennifer to take up uh, her slides while I introduce her. Jennifer is the Communications and Projects Coordinator for Early Achievers at the Department of Early Learning. She's been in this field for over 25 years um, in the field of early childhood education. Um, in the last two years, she spent working to improve the quality of care for young children in Washington State. And she's going, joining us today to um, give us an overview of um, early achievers, what the program does, what its intentions are, and then to increase um, our awareness of early achievers as a tool to help families find quality child care. And then, uh, of course, something that we can all get behind, it's that is to, to share the Department of Early Learning's efforts to promote literacy in early learning programs. And of course, we all want them to come to the library because we can help a lot in that um, area. So with no further ado, Jennifer, the mic is all yours. So we will let you take over sh and share your screen now. I would like to throw out a quick all PSA, right. um, if you don't mind. I have muted everyone's mics because we were getting some additional noise. Uh, people weren't talking, it was just the noise coming through. So um, if you want to talk, there's a mute button. It should be at the top of your screen, I believe. Uh, just move your mouse up there and it should appear. Uh, I, mine's at the bottom. Oh, yours is at the bottom. Okay, it will be one or the other. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little inconsistent as to where they place that. So just be aware your, mi your microphones are muted at the moment. Feel free to use them if you'd like. Um, and let's, I mean, do you guys mind questions during nope. this or? Nope, okay. we said that was fine, but I will oh, be right. monitored. If you, yeah. most people enjoy typing them in chat. So, and I'm going to be monitoring the chat and I will interrupt, but you can do either way. Okay, right. Jennifer, the screen's all yours. Great. Uh, Jeremy, it's, can you share the screen with me? Perfect. Okay. You had wonderful slideshow. We're just waiting for it. There we go. Here it comes. Yes, I'm, okay. I'm seeing it. St yes, there we go. Are we all set? We are. Okay. <laughs> Good. So thank you, Carolyn. I'm, I'm really excited about this opportunity to share some information about early achievers with you, all of you today. Um, so I want to start a little bit by talking about why I'm here today. In January of 
2017, the Department of Early Learning and Washington State Libraries outlined a plan for an early learning literacy partnership between early achievers and libraries. So this webinar is designed to support that plan by providing information about early achievers and our partnership with librarians, with all of you. Early Achievers is our rating and improvement system for child care and early learning in Washington. It's a quick way for families and parents to identify quality programs for their kids. Um, and as I'm sure most of you know, high quality early care is crucial to later learning and development. And what we know is that you as librarians are a trusted source of information for parents and families. And so um, providing, we're hoping that by providing you with this information, we're also helping to provide a resource for families and for child care providers across the state. So quick overview. Um, Early Achievers is Washington's QRIS, uh, which stands for Quality Rating and Improvement System. This began as QRS, a quality rating system, and was intended to address low quality in child care and early learning settings. But as states began building up their professional development system and looking at different ways to increase quality, they realized that we really needed the I. Um, so that we're going beyond just rating what's, what exists and focusing on quality improvement of the care for young children. And now we use QRS as a framework to increase observable quality in early learning settings. This really is a nationwide movement. Um, as you can see from the map, um, most states in the country have a QRIS. Um, the red states also have QRIS, but they are done by counties or regions instead of statewide. Uh, and those that don't are in the planning or um, beginning stages of creating a QRIS. So, um, it really is something that's taking place across the nation, and Washington has been at the forefront of that movement. Um, the Department of Early Learning developed Early Achievers to help early care and education programs offer high quality care that supports each child's learning and development. It's designed to ensure that children have access to high quality early learning experiences that will help them develop the skills they need to be successful in school that families and caregivers can hi find high quality child care and early learning programs that will fit their needs by providing evidence-based information about facility quality, and uh, that early learning professionals are able to provide high quality care um, through resources such as training, coaching, and incentives. So the Early Achiever System uh, is implemented with the help of our partners at Child Care Aware and the University of Washington. Together, we're promoting quality early learning throughout the state. So um, when we break this down, all of the agencies really promote quality um, for early learning. The University of Washington is responsible for the rating piece. They are the lead agency for evaluation an assessment. They have, we have data collectors from Cultivate Learning at the University of Washington and they're responsible for providing valid and reliable on-site evaluation that determines participant rating levels. Child Care Aware of Washington provides the technical assistance, training, and coaching designed to help early learning programs improve their quality of care, so that's the I, and the Department of Early Learning developed the Early Achiever System and is responsible for creating policy and procedures. So I've said the word quality a whole lot this morning, <laughs> but what does quality look like? Um, early Achievers recognizes that quality looks different in different settings and that it should be based on the needs of the families and the children served. Early Achievers is designed to be flexible to encourage a comprehensive approach to quality improvement, regardless of curriculum or philosophy, so that we can have lots of different approaches. We don't want, um, I intended to show you a nice little video about Early Achievers this morning, but we had technical difficulties. And one of the things they really talk about is we don't want cookie cutter childcare. We don't want it all to be the same. We want there to, for families to have lots of options in terms of philosophy and approach. Um, but the quality is something that can underlie all of these different approaches to early learning.
So our rating system, all participating facilities share the same foundational requirements at level one and two, and then they have to go through an evaluation process to earn points, and that's how they achieve levels three through five. Level one is licensed child care. Licensing really is the foundation of quality. So in order to be eligible to participate in early achievers, child care providers must be licensed or certified and um, submit the early achievers registration. At level two, we focus on professional growth and facility management. And this is really designed to help participants understand quality standards and system requirements. Facilities at level two will complete trainings and self-assessments that help them prepare for successful participation and evaluation. And once they've completed level two activities, then they can apply for an on-site evaluation. Facilities are evaluated through on-site data collection and they receive points in five quality standard areas. The first standard area that we look at is child outcomes. Um, this is about screening for developmental milestones, assessing each child's strengths and needs, sharing information about progress with families, individualizing activities and curriculum for each child's needs. Uh, the second standard area is interactions and environment. And uh, we evaluate this through an on-site observation and that, that is designed to measure the quality of early learning environment and interactions. And this is done through the environment rating scale, which is an uh, internationally recognized rating tool. Our, the next quality standard area is curriculum and staff support. This is um, about using a curriculum that meets developmental guidelines and providing time for staff to plan and train. The family engagement and partnerships, we um, are looking for providers to provide resources for families in their primary language, partner with families to determine child's strengths and needs, and use a self-assessment to develop a family engagement plan. Jennifer, and the last area, yes. may, I, may I ask a question? This looks to me like this is all for what I would call a professional daycare environment. What about home daycare? Is this, does that apply to this? I mean, it's looking to me like this is all something that you need, you know, staff and staff supports. And so in other words, this is not for the, the soul, the one woman who looks after six children in a in a in a quality environment is is that it or I mean it's look it's coming across to me that way is this only for like big daycare centers for centers that's a really great question it actually is designed for both centers and family home providers okay um, the, what that implementation looks like might be a little bit different so um, with staff support and train for a family home provider who does not have any um, other staff working with her, that might be about having a professional um, community that she can work with. Um, and then ensuring that she's designating time each week to plan mm -hmm. um, when she doesn't have children in the home so that, um, so that these things can also take place. And the tools are all that we use for the observations are also a little bit different. So the environment rating scale actually has a family child care rating scale that looks at, um, yeah, because they're gonna have mixed age groups. Mm -hmm. um, typically it's not one group of the same age and, and fewer staff. Um, and also, more often than not, just not one classroom where the kids are spending their day. There are usually several different rooms that they're moving between. Um, and so we've done our best to accommodate that. Um, and that is reflected in the standards. Does that answer okay. your question? Or you have yeah. Yes. And, and then I'm going to have a question about delivering daycare in extremely rural areas at the, when it's appropriate. Okay. All right. Well, I'll finish up. So staff professionalism is about just... Um, completing their uh, early childhood education certificates, credentials, or degrees, and they just get a certain number of points uh, depending on their level of education for that. So um, did you want to jump in now with? Um, 
well, I just, you know, I didn't know where <laughs> it was appropriate. I, the rural, I, I've been working with um, a very rural county, Lincoln County, Washington, and one of the challenges in, in that is that they have no professional daycare outside of family and friends. And it's, it's a real concern to the economic development coordinators there. And they were talking about it at a meeting I recently attended. And they talked about the fact that there was one woman who was going to do daycare in her home and then was basically stopped by the fact that she needed to do, you know, a necessary. But it was a $12,000 remodel to her basement to provide a second exit. And is there any support oh. for that? I mean, it basically just stopped her. In her I mean, they just she just couldn't afford that. And so she was done because she couldn't qualify. So, you know, and right. this is literally, I mean, this is really an issue in, in some of these really rural counties. And she was willing to do it. She'd done it along. And then, so is there any other support for, you know, when you come across a big economic barrier like that? Is there any grants or... Uh, this is off, you know, this is why I was kind of like, maybe we should talk about this later. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to. You know. well, um, yeah. I, I like it. I don't like just listening to myself talk all day. So I'm like, I'm, I really enjoy having the conversation and what you've raised is a really, it's, it's a, it's a big issue. And I think it's bigger than readers. It's something that we're very aware of at the department of early learning. And it's something we talk about with child care aware a lot with his ability to care particularly in rural areas. Um, there's, uh, so family, friends, and neighbors, which is, for those of you who aren't familiar, is care that is obviously given by family, friends, and neighbors, but the state actually recognizes that, and, and, uh, and those providers can be eligible to receive subsidies. So for families who are on child care subsidy, they can still go to a grandparent or a neighbor and um, still receive assistance with paying for that care. Uh, that said, obviously, the requirements are a lot lower. I think there, there have been some changes, like we're now requiring a background check and a basic fire safety inspection, but it really is minimal um, safety requirements. Licensing is really where we want to get to because licensed care is what comes with all of just all of those health and safety things that are so important. But we also understand there are a lot of barriers to that. Early achievers, really, uh, we we're addressing it from a higher level because essentially in order to enroll in early achievers, providers have to already be licensed. And I'm because I don't work in licensing, I'm not entirely sure what supports are available to help providers become licensed. Okay. Um, but I'd be happy to look into that if that's something you're interested in. Um, but for providers who are licensed and then need assistance with becoming, with, with raising the quality of care, we absolutely have a lot of built-in um, grants and other support. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, it's it's something we talk a lot about. It's uh, is is that accessibility? Yeah. Um, because it's, I think it's getting harder and harder to find child care for a lot of people, and we're trying to balance that need for child care with also that need for safety, for yeah, really high quality and safety. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we know it's important. We know it's so. We'll dive right in about why that's important. Um, why it really is like having that license and and. Uh, quality child care matters. Research shows that kids who receive high quality care in the first five years have better math and reading skills, fewer behavior problems in school, um, higher scores on tests measuring cognitive and academic achievement, and a greater likelihood of graduating from high school. So a lot of the issues that are related to poor school performance are due to gaps in early care and development that existed before the child ever entered school. And that's running to a 2005 study by the National Institute of Child Health and Development. For children from low-income families, quality early learning has lasting positive effects on school success, graduation rates, and um, a decreased need for special education services. So the stakes are really high and the impact is huge. Um, it also supports strong social emotional development. Uh, and those skills help kids learn how to succeed in new environments, participate in our learning activities, 
regulate their emotions and behaviors, and form meaningful relationships with peers and adults, all of which are hugely important in success later in life. Does anyone have any questions about the impact or the uh, importance of quality care? I think you're talking to believers here. Yeah, okay, I don't, I, <laughs> I am preaching to the choir today, huh? Yeah, well, I good. think in that That's sense, great. yes. <laughs> uh, so the other piece, so let's move on to families then. Um, early achievers has benefits for families as well. They're receiving evidence-based information about facility quality to help them find high quality childcare and early learning programs. Um, all participating programs have demonstrated a commitment to improving quality so parents can feel confident about their child care choice. And what that means is um, when we get to the rating level, I think a lot of a lot of times you kind of like, well, I want that five star. Um, and, and really we want what we want to do is think of early achievers as a progression. Um, and simply from the very beginning, we're seeing an increase in quality. So that really no matter where they are in their progress, um, you can feel confident in your child care choice. Um, and finally, participation is completely free for providers. There is, so there's no additional cost to families. There's no enrollment fee, there's no cost for evaluation, there is no cost for providers at all to participate. The goal of Early Achievers is to improve quality of care while maintaining the unique strengths of child care programs. We want families to be able to find high quality care that also reflects their philosophy and their culture. And this comes back to that cookie cutter. We, we want families to be able to find child care providers that speak the same language they do in their home or reinforce their cultural values or their parenting philosophies. So we have some really nice quotes here from participants um, about what Early Achievers has done for them. And I'll, I think we'll be sending out slides at the end of this and there'll also be a recording so that you can read that. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to send the links to the videos that we couldn't watch today as well. But the gist of it is programs that choose to participate in Early Achievers, they demonstrated a commitment to providing care that supports the whole child and recognizes parents as their child's first and most important teacher. Early Achievers was developed in collaboration with child care professionals across the state and is based on the latest research on how young children learn and grow. We found that when child care providers get one-on-one -on -one coaching and a modest amount of money to make changes to their programs, the quality of the care they give children starts to quickly increase. Can I yeah. interject here? And maybe, uh, Jeremy, uh, could you unmute the uh, everyone since we don't have that many? I see that lots of folks are still. Oh, was, I can do that. I can do that. Unmute. You can do it, but uh, I, I mostly had them muted because a yeah. couple people earlier had background noise. Right. I, I know. And now I, I can see we've got some folks here who might want to ask questions. And, and my first question is how librarians are all about connections. And so how mm -hmm. might we serve as a connect to reach out to preschool already existing daycare people how might we uh, reach out to those family and friends what how do you anticipate working with with libraries to um, help you make those connections well we've got a couple of ways obviously this webinar is the first step because you can't share information if you don't have the information and so really we want to start by by like having that um underlying understanding of early achievers and what it is so that then librarians will feel comfortable sharing information about it with families. Um, and actually, I think we'll address that a little bit later on. If, okay. Do you mind if we Not at all. wait Not on all. that? Okay. Okay. Um, and we can, I don't know how we are on time, but we are. Uh, we, we're plenty. okay. We're plenty um, fine. Okay. Uh, it, so, and, um, and then we can we can do a deep dive into the topics that are most important to all of you at the end of this. Um, 
quick overview of just kind of giving you an idea of who's participating. We have more than 5,000 early achievers participants, and that includes child care centers, family child care homes, certified tribal, um, tribal facilities, military facilities, ECAP, which is our state-funded preschool, and Head Start, which is federally funded preschool. And um, one of the things I like, um, reasons I like to share this information is because one of our goals is to promote early learning system integration. There are many settings that provide care and early learning to children, and we know kids are moving between these settings. It's very rare for a child to go into um, a child care setting at birth and remain there until they enter kindergarten. And so what we want to do is create a seamless and comprehensive system of quality so that no matter where kids are, we know that they are going to have access to quality care. Um, and we're trying to help ensure that that happens regardless of their setting or their region. Um, you're also going to notice on here the majority, so the, um, that big green bubble, those are providers that accept child care subsidy. Um, the majority of our participants do accept state child care subsidy or ECAP funding, and that's because in 2015, the Early Start Act passed, which mandated that all early learning programs accepting state funds must participate in early achievers. Um, and that means that early achievers has a significant impact on the quality of care being received by low income and at risk children across the state. So most of these providers are serving um, low income families. Okay, so to get to the question about those resources and how we help providers through this, as I said before, there's no cost to join and they receive access to a, a variety of resources and support. So free training, one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, scholarships, which is, that's been a really big deal. We've um, had thousands of teachers return to school and get degrees through their early achiever scholarships. We also offer us um, several different grants. So we have a $750 quality and uh, needs-based grant, um, and then other grants that kind of come and go depending on where we're at. Uh, and then once, and that's to help prepare for the rating process. And then once they've been rated, if they're serving subsidy, they'll receive an annual quality improvement award. And that is um, up to $10,000 a year for the highest rating. And it really depends on what kind of society it is, whether it's family or center and, and their rated level. And the last benefit is tiered subsidy reimbursement so that um, the higher level they rate at, the higher subsidy rate they receive. All right, and yeah, the focus is continuous quality improvement so that it is uh, a constant growth process. Um, Practice-based coaching, creating a quality improvement plan, um, Essentially, the rating process, really, it's not the end. It's not this test that you pass, but it's just the beginning because the data we collect during those evaluations, that helps staff and leadership identify their goals, and then the coaches will help them achieve those goals. Um, and those goals will inform the level and type of support each facility receives. All right, so this kind of comes back to Carolyn's question, which is why we're here today. For, First and foremost, we know that you are a huge part of, of local communities. You're a trusted source of information for parents and families. Um, and we're hoping that at the end of this, you'll see Early Achievers as a tool that will allow you to provide parents with information they can trust about child care providers in your area. So, um, and I think some of this uh, went out in the original email. Um, to this end, we recently created some outreach materials that are designed to raise awareness and provide information about early achievers and the importance of quality early learning. I know that some have already requested materials and should be receiving them shortly. And uh, we've sent a whole lot of other posters. Um, we're actually out of the brochures, but we have some really beautiful bookmarks um, that we've sent to Carolyn 
and she has those materials in her office and has offered to assist with requests for materials. So, Carolyn, what is the best way for them to to so they can email e they can email me and I have just a ton of posters um, that I would be more than willing to send out um, I don't have as many bookmarks but the bookmarks are wonderful in fact I did ask Jennifer um, if we couldn't have more of the bookmarks because the bookmarks promote reading reading to your child at home and I was thinking you know what better bookmark for us to have than a, a bookmark promoting reading to your child at home so I think I probably have enough uh, posters to send out, you know, one for your, your branch and then several for your possibly the branch librarian to distribute or for you to distribute to other places that are appropriate child places in your community. Perhaps you would want to give them to a, a, a church for, you know, posting by their nursery or, you know, places like that. We could, we could send out, I think I have, I have like four inches and you can imagine how many posters that is so I have plenty of posters and um, I do have a, some some bookmarks and and um, we'll be happy to if you want to email me we'll send them out to you and we do have printable PDFs of the brochure um, it's a fantastic brochure because really it's a checklist to help parents in looking when they're looking for child care get some idea of what to look for as they're out is is that um, on your is that on your website so you could send out a link? It is on our website. It, it um, and we will send out a link to that as well. Yes. So we we got a lot of stuff to send you guys at the end of this. Um, and I want to bring this back at the very beginning. Uh, Carolyn had asked us about the transition to the Department of Children, Youth, and Families, um, which is really exciting. I don't know how familiar all of you are with uh, that change, but that just was implemented in the last legislative session and um, it's actually going to bring children's administration um, which is the foster care system and child protective services um, under the umbrella of all of the other things department of early learning is doing and then a year after that we're going to bring in juvenile justice um, and that might seem like an interesting fit but what it means is that we're focusing on prevention, we're really focusing on, on reaching out to families and those children who are have the highest level of need as early as possible. And I think, it, I think it's going to be a really great thing. But the flip side of that is that uh, if you'll notice, like the brochure has, uh, has Department of Early Learning on it. And the poster has you direct you to the Department of Early Learning website and same with the bookmarks. Uh, and so at this point, um, we're not, it, we're not printing anymore because we know that next year we're going to have a brand new logo and a brand new website. And so we're holding off. Um, we want to get these out in the community now where they're still relevant. Um, but hopefully come next July, we'll be able to print some more and then actually look at getting a lot more of the bookmarks and the brochures out to you. I apologize for not having them. Well, that's just fine. We all know how funding goes. <laughs> Yeah, so um, additional information. So when, um, for families who are looking for child care, there are several different sources. So we have Child Care Check on our website, right? We're in the process of, of kind of upgrading that system right now. That's better for if you have a specific provider in mind and want more information about them, that's really good. Um, but for families that don't have a provider and are just trying to find one, Child Care Aware has a fantastic resource and referral um, agency. And they, uh, the phone number and their website both have child care search um, assistance for families. Okay, and, and, um, and, and then, B. Wallace just asked that question, is there a resource for parents? And that, that would be where they would, that list these quality child cares. So uh, uh, does yeah. that answer your question, B. Wallace? Hopefully. Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, I also, so on our website, if, when you go to the Early Achievers website, we have a whole section um, that is designed for families. Um, and it, it is a lot about Early Achievers, but it, it also provides a lot of information about kind of the importance of those first five years and a lot of really great resources for families as well. So um, you want to check that out. Um, we just updated that, so there's a lot of really, really neat stuff on there. Okay. Um, um, are there 
other questions we that um, you know I, I promised a question and answer anybody else have questions besides me or, or so anybody else have questions they want to throw in here or we can we're not quite done I guess so no, okay we're almost we're, we're almost there but so uh, I want to talk a little bit about the other piece um, and that is supporting providers. So I really focus on kind of just that overview of early achievers so everyone has a good idea of what it is and then how we can help parents find quality child care. But there's this, um, a big part of what we're doing isn't actually working directly with families. Um, it's about supporting providers. Um, the partner, so the partnership between Dell and libraries includes supports for child care providers in Washington. And we really appreciate the efforts that you and other librarians across the state are contributing in a variety of support providers. Um, we know a lot of great stuff is already happening and we're hoping that we can support even more um, collaboration between local libraries and child care providers. Some of the supports that are already taking place, um, there is, we have a quarterly newsletter for early achievers participants and beginning in spring of this year, that newsletter has featured um, a regular article written by librarians about early literacy. And we've had some really fantastic articles contributed so far and hope to continue that into the future. Um, and if that's something you're interested in, uh, I believe you can ask Carolyn about yeah, Car upcoming article contributions. Yeah, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach the uh, systems and uh, we'll schedule out. Um, Jennifer has given us a list of topics, which I think we are capable of, of addressing. And so I'm going to ask people to volunteer to uh, do these and then we'll get a schedule, which we'll share with Jennifer. And um, so we will have this scheduled several years into the future, I would imagine, by the time I get done. It, I'm anticipating being done with this about the end of February. So sending us, uh, you know, some topics, having people that are librarians address them with contact information so that providers can do that. So yes, contact me if you're interested. But I will be reaching Excellent. out to you. I'm going to be reaching out to you. <laughs> if you're not contacted, <laughs> just wait. I'll, I'll be there. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So Carolyn will be in t will be providing more information about that in the future. We also recently uh, featured a blog article written by Susan Anderson Newham. New Newham. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, it was a really beautiful article, um, and that's on the Dell blog uh, about protective factors and using books to promote protective factors for. Um, children experiencing adverse childhood experiences. Um, so some of the other supports include STARS trainings, and I know that's something that it's already happening across the state. There are lots of trainings taking place in libraries and at conferences, um, and we want to continue to support that. Um, and finally, probably what I see as one of the most important pieces as a former preschool teacher is just access to library resources. Um, I don't know how I could have done my job without libraries and librarians, honestly, um, because when you think about the different genres and the different topics and all of the wonderful things you want to expose children um, So pro getting providers assistance with selecting children's books in a variety of genres and topics. Um, the variety of programs that you offer for children and families. And then um, another big piece is access and assistance with online resources. So um, while a lot of the activities take place in person and with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the system itself, the enrollment and um, the request for the evaluation, these are all things that need to happen online. These are all online applications. Um, and for providers, for a lot of providers, that's not something that they have regular access to at home. So the ability to come in and access the internet to update their goals and to um, keep on top of their participation and, uh, and ask questions and get assistance with technical issues is another huge piece. Um, 
so that's sort of the plan that, that we had outlined when we met, gosh, way back in January, I think. Um, and that's our goal moving forward with this partnership. So do anyone have any other, does anyone have any other questions? And you, if you have a headset, uh, you can just, you know, ask a question or you can type it in chat either way. Um, d does early achievers have any conferences at which librarians could make, uh, we could watch so we could submit proposals to make presentations? Absolutely. Uh, so we have, um, for providers, we have the Early Achievers Institute, and we typically have those take place three times a year, and each one is in a different location. So once a year, we'll be in Western Washington, and then we'll do one in Central Washington, and then another one in Eastern. We actually just had the Central Washington Institute in October, and I believe our next one is in March. And um, what's the process for application to do a presentation? Those are, so those are actually planned by uh, Cultivate Learning at the University of Washington. I can, I'll add it to my list of things that I will send to you, um, because I imagine in the next couple months they're going to be looking for people to present at the, in, the next institute, excuse me. Um, okay. So I will find out who you need to talk to at Cultivate Learning. Yeah, because I think it would be great to have, uh, you know, a regional librarian or, or regional library present at these things, you know. Um, it, it would, again, yeah. achieve that, you know, you can come here for resources. So, okay. Three times a year. Yeah, so, and, you know, and I, sorry, go ahead. Do they, do they send out a call for proposals? Or do they, we just have to reach out, we, or do we need to reach out to them? Let me, I, let me look into it. I can absolutely get you the information about the Institute and then mm -hmm. I will find out from them how they go about finding okay. presenters because, um, because what I, I know when we talked, that was one of our goals. Um, and it's, we, I have not discussed it much today. Um, and I think maybe it's because I feel like that's the one you can really have a handle on, but, um, that is just emphasizing the importance of literacy and access to reading okay. materials. Okay, well, I'm seeing, um, okay, I'm, I'm seeing some ch ac activity in the chat, and R Down says, um, how are libraries reaching child care providers, especially Friendly Fans Network? And I was going to call on Cecilia, and she says, uh, the Kaleidoscope Play and Learn, and they hold it in Chinese, English, in 12. Uh, do you want to just unclick your your microphones, uh, Cecilia, and talk a little bit more, especially someone, just what other things you might do besides your, your kaleidoscope play and learn? Cecilia, can you talk in your microphone? Cecilia is the King County Library Service. Um, she doesn't have a micro set, her, her microphone set up. Oh. She's gonna put it on. Okay, she's gonna put it on. Now that I've put her on the spot. Okay. I, do, okay, I, I, I believe Kaleidoscope is, is implemented by our partners at Child Care Aware who also do our coaching and, and training as well. Are you there? Okay. Uh, Cecilia, have you got it on yet? Uh, uh, maybe. It's getting there. So, uh, no, she's getting there. All right. She's just getting there. So, um, and then please send the link to the brochures. We have everyone's, uh, how are we doing that? Jeremy, how are we sending out the links? Do we need people's email addresses, Jeremy, to send out the links? How did you um, How did you send out information for the? Uh, I did it broadcast. I just did it widely. So maybe we had that, better. That would be my recommendation. Uh, how about if everybody types before. there? If you want it, please type your email in chat, and um, we, we will make sure that we get it. Yes. I was suggesting. Uh, I'm not sure. What is that noise? Oh, that might be Celia's mic. It might be me. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
Instagram. Anyways, uh, we should probably send it out broadcast. It might be that some people want to attend, but just couldn't. Just okay. So send it out the can, same way? Yeah, send it out the yeah. same way would be my recommendation. Okay. Well, Cecilia, can you talk a little bit more now since you got your microphone yes. on? Uh, Kaleidoscope Play and Learn it is uh, a program that we use that's provided by, the training is provided by um, healthcare resources. Um, it is a program that has, that is evaluated every year and based on the best early learning practices of engaging parents and caregivers with children in um, play, uh, literacy, hands-on activities. We have it every week of the year. It's an hour and a half each week. We have bilingual in Spanish. We have one in Spanish, one is several in Chinese. Um, we pay for the majority of them, but the Chinese Information Service Center pays for some of our uh, sessions as well. It's also an opportunity to bring families into the library that we generally don't see and to connect them with other uh, family child cares and to sneakily uh, get our information about the library and the programs we have um, into their homes. So how much do you pay? How much does this cost the King County Library System? Is this affordable for everybody or is it just something? Uh, you pay a hundred dollars uh, a session for the facilitators. And I think I'm going to probably raise that up to either a hundred five or a hundred ten dollars in 2018. Um, and I believe that our outside uh, provider, the CISC, pays $100 a session as well. I've been able to pull this in for our general operating fund and not to depend on foundation funding um, for this. We also spend about $2,500 a year on supplies like finger paint and glue and paper and toys, that sort of thing. And that's during this kaleidoscope play and learn. That's to support right. the, that. Right. So, and and this is something that's available in every county and region, or just specific areas. Um, I think it might just be in the King County uh, service area. Well, it seemed so, to me that me, it was because it's in Seattle as well. So well, I. I thought it was in Pierce County as well. Jennifer, do you know the answer to that? I think that's I, 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 I know we. Oh, uh, sorry. It may well. So I, I know Kaleidoscope does some things down here as well. Um, and, and where is down you, here? You bring up. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. We're, we're in Thurston County. Okay. So, um, so Pierce County. Um, you bring up a really interesting point. I've been talking a lot about child care aware. Um, child care aware of Washington is actually a system of regional resource and referrals and so they're all child care aware but regionally they are often known by different names so for example in King and Pierce County it's child care resource and referral um, is the name of the child care aware offices for those counties um, and I think in central it's Catholic services I um, so if child care aware doesn't sound familiar to you you may you your region may have a different name for it. So um, yeah, Child Care Resource and Referral in King and Pierce County, they're the ones that offer the training and the coaching and do the kaleidoscope as well. They'll also next year as we start to implement new requirements for family, friend, and neighbors, um, I believe we'll be um, providing some of that training as well. And I just posted the link to Kaleidoscope Plan Learn. Great. Thank you. And please turn to me if you have any questions about how we provide it. There are ways to host them in your libraries with no cost to your system. The biggest challenge is to have the ability to set aside a dedicated room every week of the year um, for two hours, two or oh. half hours, oh. yeah. <laughs> which is a huge That's a huge barrier. Ask. For, for some of our libraries. But, I was just, oh, it's so useful, but oh. Mm -hmm. But our, our, our libraries are going to be so, it is such a great asset for our communities that we're willing to set that time aside. 
is the requirement that it has to be weekly or could it be monthly? I mean, I can see the benefit of. of no, it really, it, we, we, it, the requirement really is to have it every week, if at all possible. Mm. I, again, I'm thinking of my rural clientele mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how, you know, it's like, okay, uh, you know, uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of my really t small, I, I deal with a little, a lot of tiny, small libraries, and th that's just, I mean, just uh, nothing else, the space, how much space is required? We only have to have um, stations, there are probably five or six stations um, each week. You need a place to store all the materials, which let me tell you, is our, is our biggest barrier, because our libraries are built to serve the public rather than to have storage for programs. Yeah. My recommendation is that uh, reach out to child care um, resources. They have a lot of materials that I'm sure they're willing to share. Libraries can take from those resources and put on um, programs around those resources. But, you know, that being said, the, the fidelity of the program is very important to them. So do, do reach out to Lisa Conway is who we work with. Um, okay. Well, you know, I, was, I think if it's worth doing, it's worth tackling. <laughs> So, and I think I it's agree. worth doing, I, it's worth I doing. Agree. So librarians are known for solving problems. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just have to figure it out. So Jennifer, are oh. there other things that we've just jumped in here? So, well, no, I, I, one of the things that she brings up is I think, I think as we, as we talk about this partnership that, um, you know, part of it is putting those systems pieces in places so that the webinar and, and the trainings, um, and the materials, but really the most meaningful partnerships happen at the community level, at things like Cecilia is talking about. Um, so I think one of the um, most important things I heard you to do today is um, if you visit the Child Care Aware Washington website, they have all of the regional resource and referral offices listed there. Um, and finding ways that you can connect with them, um, I think is the best way to look at how we can partner to reach out to providers in particular. Because as we touched on earlier, the needs of providers vary widely. Rural providers have very different, are facing some really different barriers than those in King County um, and need different resources. And so ideally what I want to, um, what we'd like to work towards is is those partnerships really on the at the community level, um, and being able to support families and support providers uh, and early learning in every community together. Okay, and how much flexibility do programs have? Um, in other words, I was again. I'm thinking about my rural communities, where you know if they said they wanted every place. Could they do, you know, a, it weekly, but in around the, a county, different places in the county on a weekly basis? When we're talking about Kaleidoscope, that's some, that is, um, because that happens through the regional offices. So another, I couldn't. Okay. Okay. So in other yeah, words, it work, that, with that your, work, with your, work with your local people. Okay. Okay. So yeah. other folks. Yeah, because they're okay. going to know. Yeah. And I see a nice, nice thing from. From Cecilia, any any other one? Um, are other folks on the other? Um, Carol or our Downs or Mary? Anybody have any particular questions? I've been very forthwith in asking mine. So anyone else? You can type. You don't have to talk. You can type it in. <laughs> well, I just I I know we're. We've got a few more minutes, but I just want to say how much I really appreciate the opportunity to do this and and that I, I do hope that this is the beginning of an ongoing partnership um, and that really from this we can start to see lots of different ways because I think there's a lot of there's a lot of overlap and a lot of opportunities for connections between the two fields. Absolutely. Literacy is our, our deal. So and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
and then we we you know giving our 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 children and our youth the best possible start is one of the things we want to do so okay sounds like yeah. people are agreeing so um i'm you're going to send me all of the links and i'm going to send yeah. it out broadly again like i did before and especially okay. to um I will be sending it out on the youth connections and the youth leadership list. So, okay. All right. All right. Well, well, Jennifer, thank you. thank you. Thank you for being willing to share this and we will keep uh, working together to actually, because All we right. want to, of course, our end game is to make the, uh, a better life for our children. So that's a good deal. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you everyone for uh, coming. If, last Go ahead. thing, if you think of a question later as like, a, which is what always happens to me is it's, once I get off, then it's like, oh, I wish I'd asked this. Please don't hesitate to give me a call or send me an email. I am happy to answer any questions or provide information. So please do feel free to contact me. All right. Okay. Thank you. All Thanks, right. everybody, for coming. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.